everybody, this is Jeff with Island Hopper TV and today we are coming to you from Buenos Aires, Argentina. In case you are wondering what Buenos Aires means, I know I was wondering because I thought it meant good air, right? And that's exactly what it means. Good air or fair winds, that's what Buenos Aires means. So I wanted to show you guys this view from my hotel here. Uh, it's pretty nice, I would say, right? I mean, you know, you can see everything all across the city and this hotel right here is called the Howard Johnson Hotel so we're gonna walk around Buenos Aires take a look at the street art take a look at the things to do and just tell you guys about the things to know about Buenos Aires and let's get started okay so what I'm gonna show you here is what is known as the widest Avenue in the world so this is Avenue de Julio, so Nueve de Julio in the heart of Buenos Aires. It is the widest road avenue in the world. In the middle of it is a metro system, uh, as you can see. This was, this was the avenue that I was looking down on from that aerial view to open. Uh, one of the interesting things I'd also like to point out is that the streets going perpendicular, like this one's called Lima, the one going uh, east to west here is you have Venezuela then you have Mexico so this is Venezuela um, you can see it says Venezuela the next one over is Mexico and so they've done that kind of cool situation I just wanted to show you Nueve de Julio the widest Avenue in the world so going to cross right here Give you guys a little bit more perspective before I jump into the next subject. Let's see if I can cross. You can see the big, uh, what is that called, the Atlas? So another thing to know about Buenos Aires is it is a bit challenging to use the financial systems, the banking systems, the banks. You know they. It's been the hardest country in South America so far to withdraw money. So having cash with you, if you can bring cash, not having to deal with the uh, ATM system, the banks. Uh, my bank also flagged me for uh, fraud protection, which means that they, there was unusual activity. So they put a hold on my account. I've been trying to call my bank. So just letting you know, bring some, bring some cash if you can. So another thing to keep in mind as we keep going is there is a lot of police around here. You know, there's a lot of police all on every corner. And so that leads into, you know, safety, being safe. Um, going into areas where it is touristy or populated like this, central Buenos Aires, uh, just keeping that at the forefront of your mind, but also going in places where there's going to be police presence, you know? You saw that amount of police that was right there, so definitely something that's helpful and there you go so another thing to keep in mind is going to be the language over here is Castellano Spanish also Lunfrado so that's a different type of Spanish and the reason I bring that up is because there's gonna be different words that you're uh, just not used to um, you're gonna hear it and you're gonna think to yourself what what did they just say no, that's not how I would say that in Spanish, so simply knowing regular Spanish is not going to get you very far here. Um, really, it's not. So it's Castellano Spanish. I believe it comes, it's name, it is supposedly originated from Castile Castle in Spain. But uh, it is also said that it originated, it just. It's like a different dialect that originated here in Pan America or South American uh, area. It's kind of all over Buenos Aires, but just wanted to point that out because I found that to be something that I've been personally a little bit challenged with. So just a little bit more history on Buenos Aires. So it was originally established in the 15th century twice, and the city actually was originally called Trinidad city of Trinidad so there is a big long name for Buenos Aires if you really wanted to know the full name it also involves Santa Maria 
from what I've been told. So Buenos Aires, Santa Maria, Trinidad are all some names for the city, but this is Buenos Aires is its second name, and I believe from what I read and what I heard, Trinidad was one of its original names. So also something else to keep in mind. There's about 17 million people that live in the Buenos Aires metropolitan area. That's a lot of people. Thankfully, you don't uh, see them all at one time, right? But that's a huge city. I mean, good thing it sprawls. Because when you're in a big city with 17 million, I mean, if it was all congested and condensed, it'd be really hard to get around, you know, basically hard to breathe. You know, how do you find solace and peace and relaxation if it was that crowded but it's not too terribly crowded but it is a little bit crowded that's a beautiful looking street right there and I remember I was telling you the names of the cities or the names of the streets this one's called Paraguay and Avenue Nueve de Julio so something something else to keep in mind as we keep this tour going also, Buenos Aires is located on a river delta called Rio de Plata. So there's a river delta here, pours into the Atlantic. And also, because of that, it's interesting to understand the biosphere here, the environment. Springtime is the best time to visit because that's when the trees start to bloom and change colors and all of this beautiful flora and fauna really comes to life. I'm visiting here in August, which is the equivalent of January in their winter. So, the area that I'm in right now is near the Japanese Botanical Garden, or the Japanese Garden. Japanese, as they would say, next to the airport. So, I'm also going to show you guys some food stuff, but while I do do that in my other videos, I'm going to mention that if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, good luck <laughs> in South America, but really good luck in Argentina, Argentina as they say, right? And the reason is, is steak and carne, Pollo, really big parts of the diet here. So I know that's not what some of the vegetarians and vegans wanted to hear, but look it up if you don't believe me. Uh, being a vegetarian and a vegan here is very difficult. You will find some stuff, but it's not going to be like it is in America or in the United States. So let's see, we're gonna cross the street. Here soon, I gotta go to the Japanese garden. So this brings me to my next point about transportation. Walking around the city is doable and it can be done. It is a bit hectic. Uh, for example, I've just been waiting here at this light for the light to change now for quite some time, along with all of these other people. And the light still has not changed. So they decided to make a run for it. But you can see the light is still red. I mean, they just got so tired of sitting, standing there. Um, <laughs> interesting how you guys got to see that firsthand, how just how walking can be around here. I mean, and people speed too. Like they'll go really quickly. Thankfully those cars stop for us. But uh, I would overall say that I have found it to be in some areas really efficient to walk but others you would rather be in a car <laughs> or in a bus which leads me to my next point how to get around the city and I do this in most cities I recommend the hop on hop off buses tours the hop off hop on hop off bus here has a blue line and a red line and it takes you to all the tourist destinations. You don't even really need TripAdvisor to tell you because they'll tell you. And 
if you can, just hop on it, ride on it for three hours, listen to the audio recording. They'll give you a history lesson. And then if you want to go back to any of those places after you've already taken the tour, maybe get the 48 hour pass and then revisit those places along the route that you found to be the most interesting get dropped off there because it is a bit of a crab shoot trying to go to all these places or find out where all the great places are and uh yeah i mean i don't even know if i would have known about these jardin papajones gardens had i not been on that hop on hop off tour and then I went on the map and I saw it had 51,000 reviews. So, something interesting to keep in mind. Let's see here. Where's the entrance? So, what better place than the um, Japanese garden here in Buenos Aires to talk about the climate of actually Buenos Aires? So, it has a temperate climate. So it's classified as a humid subtropical climate with four distinct seasons. Summer, summers are hot, very humid, with frequent thunderstorms, while winters are cool and drier with frosts that occur on average twice per year. So the highest recorded temperature in Buenos Aires is 109 degrees with the lowest recorded temperature being 22 degrees. So different climate factors influence the climate of Buenos Aires to semi-permanent South Atlantic High influences the climate throughout the year by bringing in moist winds from the Northeast. So like I said, it's the winter time here right now and it's cool. Like cool as in cold, chilly, breezy, 50, 60 degrees. I don't think We've reached 70 degrees once, but in the mornings it'll be cool, and then in the daytimes it'll be like take off the sweater cold or take off the sweater hot. So in the mornings you start out with the sweater, in the afternoons you want to take off the sweater. So as I mentioned before, this is not a very friendly town for vegetarians or vegans. Here I am, just at a street vendor. You can see they've got. Choropan, Super Hamburger Aces, Super Bondelitos, Churrasquita. So, let's take a look here at what they got. On the grill there. Yeah. Let's see, some street food. I'm going to do something. Got a Choropan. So, this here is Argentinian street food. You can see it right here. And I'm gonna put some of these on here. I'm gonna put basically all of it. Let's try it. Let's see what's up. So Argentina, Argentina street food, Choropan. And this is a good time to mention football. Right next to this monument here, 150th anniversary for also the cricket club. But Argentina loves its football. That's why every year in the World Cup, Argentina is one of the top competitors. And actually one of the best soccer players or football as they call it here football one of the best players in the world lionel messi who's from rosario i believe here in argentina and so you can see here's some kids even playing soccer right now just wanted to bring that up so i don't know if you need to know anything else beyond that other than just Really a big sport all around the world, but here in Argentina, they love their football. And this guy's even carrying a soccer ball. So did you know that the shopping area is quite unique for antiques? Leather, all things leather. Leather jackets, leather purses, leather wallets, so much leather. Even some wood, um, custom wood designs and whatnot. So. Okay, here's another thing. Street art. Street art is everywhere. Literally, 
I mean, just be walking and you'll see a garage that's painted with a unique mural. Which is a whole building that's taken on a street, or, a street art theme. So, there's places like Recoleta, which is where I'm at now. And there's another neighborhood called La Poca, where you can go. Look at that. More of that leather. What a great shopping place that is. And another thing to do here is check out these um, cemeteries. This is the cemetery Ripoletto. Again, just like Paris has one of these cemeteries, right? You know, the catacombs and these tombs. I didn't know any better. I would think I heard that Evita, the famous singer, has a tomb here in this uh, area. So I'll see if I can find that. So another thing to know that I just asked my taxi driver is what about Uber? And he said, no, no, right? Uber is no good? No good, no Uber. They'll come to Buenos Aires and use Uber, use taxis. Okay, and the last and final thing that I have to drive home with you is Buenos Aires is a nighttime city. There are people in this city who do not even wake up until 9 o'clock p.m. As you can see, it is only 7 p.m. So there is people just now getting ready to go to dinner and they will be there by 9 o'clock. This is a night city and tango is the big thing to do. So if you like to do tango and you like to dance, Buenos Aires is the place for you to at least learn if you haven't already learned. So thank you to everyone for watching this video and this episode of Island Hopper TV. My name is Jeff and we will see you next time.